Wakana Gojo is an insecure but passionate Hina doll tailor. Due to his hobby, Gojo isolates himself out of fear of being ridiculed. One day, Gojo meets Marin Kitagawa, a popular classmate. While he is on cleaning duty after school, Kitagawa arrives, and they have a conversation where she tells him that he needs to be honest about his true feelings. That night, Gojo reflects on what Kitagawa had told him. When his sewing machine stops working, his grandfather expresses his desire to buy a new one. While a new machine is being delivered, Gojo decides to use the one present in his school's sewing room. However, Kitagawa arrives, and instead of laughing at him, she expresses her admiration for his tailoring skills. Suddenly, Kitagawa removes her clothes and shows Gojo a cosplay outfit of a video game character she has been working on, which he inadvertently berates. She then asks him if he might be able to make one, explaining how important the character Shizuku Kuro is to her. Despite having never done clothing for a real person before, Gojo agrees to assist her and promises to do his best, much to Kitagawa's delight. Kitagawa explains her desire to cosplay as Shizuku, a female character from the erotic video game Slippery Girls 2, leaving Gojo perplexed. She then explains that gender does not matter when one enjoys doing something, to which he agrees. Afterward, she gives him an instruction booklet on making cosplay outfits. The next day, an eager Kitagawa unexpectedly arrives at Gojo's shop. Gojo feels uneasy about taking her measurements while naked, but an unfazed Kitagawa strips down to reveal she came in wearing a bathing suit. When he inquires if she finds this embarrassing, she responds that it is not. As such, Gojo pushes his impure thoughts aside and begins measuring Kitagawa more professionally. Despite his concentration, a flustered Gojo has difficulty measuring her bust and inseam, though he eventually obtains the complete measurements. Gojo then asks Kitagawa if she has any references for Shizuku, prompting her to give him both slippery girl titles. Later that night, Gojo plays the games for research, much to his grandfather's dismay. The night before returning to school, Gojo has a vivid wet dream about Kitagawa. At school, Gojo evades Kitagawa for most of the day. She finally manages to find him at the school entrance and asks if he wants to go shopping for the materials needed for the outfit. However, Gojo reluctantly refuses. When Kitagawa finds him again, Gojo explains why he left. Seeing his low self-esteem, she assures him that they are friends. They then head to multiple shops. Later that night, they head to a ramen shop, where they embarrass and worry the other customers when they discuss the Slippery Girls games. Walking back, Gojo tells Kitagawa that because of his line of work, he can only call things beautiful or pretty when he truly means it. Before they part ways, Kitagawa mentions an upcoming cosplay event will happen in two weeks. Seeing what little time he has, Gojo becomes worried. Now that the next cosplay event is in two weeks, Gojo becomes stressed. When he heads home, his grandfather falls over after seeing one of the contents in Gojo's bag. As such, Gojo takes him to the hospital, where his cousin, Miori, joins him. At school, Gojo explains what happened to Kitagawa. Genuinely worried, she tells him that she wants to help him in any way possible, so they exchange their contact information. Thanks to all the tasks he had to do, an exhausted Gojo becomes distraught until he remembers a conversation he had with his grandfather, which reinvigorates him. The next day, Gojo tells Kitagawa he finished the outfit, much to her surprise. When she admits she did not clearly convey the situation to him, Gojo is relieved to know that he still has time to complete the outfit. However, Kitagawa breaks down crying and apologizes profusely. Gojo manages to calm her down by telling her that it will be worth it if she is happy with the outfit. When Kitagawa puts it on, she is immensely pleased with the results. Kitagawa excitedly asks Gojo to take some pictures of her. When he does, he asks her to pose more as Shizuku would. Once she is happy with the results, Kitagawa uploads the pictures on social media. She then tells Gojo that they shall attend a cosplay event the following day. Kitagawa is incredibly excited when they arrive there, while Gojo is more restrained. Later, several attendees approach Kitagawa to take her picture. While he watches Kitagawa have fun, Gojo begins to wonder if this will be the last time they hang out together since he fulfilled his promise. When they reunite, she explains that her dress is becoming uncomfortable due to the intense heat, so they head inside to cool off and alleviate her stress. Feeling better, Kitagawa tells Gojo that they shall return to the plaza one last time before leaving. She meets with a lady who had asked her for a picture earlier. When they head home, Kitagawa asks Gojo what cosplay they should work on next, much to his relief. A drowsy Gojo then tells her she looks beautiful. Kitagawa is stunned as she remembers what Gojo previously said concerning this issue. 
Gojo's grandfather returns home, and he is shocked when he sees Gojo and Kitagawa hanging out together. Once they clear up the situation, Kitagawa realizes she has fallen in love with Gojo. Kitagawa reveals her family situation and questionable eating habits as they eat dinner. The next day, a young girl arrives at the shop during a downpour, and Gojo's grandfather invites her inside. Following an embarrassing first meeting and misunderstanding between them, Sejuna Inui eventually tells Gojo that she wants to commission a cosplay outfit, revealing that she is Juju, the cosplayer Kitagawa previously mentioned. When Kitagawa arrives, she is starstruck by Juju's presence. While they talk, Juju expresses her desire to cosplay as Cheyenne Nikaido, a character from the anime Flower Princess Blaze, who Kitagawa is also a fan of. When Juju asks Kitagawa why she does not want to cosplay as Cheyenne despite this, she responds that their physiques do not match. As such, Juju gains immense respect for Kitagawa as a cosplayer. Before she leaves, Juju asks Gojo for his contact information. She then realizes that Gojo and Kitagawa are not dating. Juju declines Kitagawa's proposal to do a group cosplay until Kitagawa and Gojo offer to split the studio fees. Gojo then decides to watch Flower Princess Blaze, for research. Later that night, his grandfather praises his improvement and encourages him to practice his tailoring and makeup skills with Kitagawa. The next day, Gojo arrives at Kitagawa's apartment, only to find her disheveled. When she finally lets him in, she tells him they should watch the series together. As they do so, Kitagawa realizes she is having a home date with Gojo. Just then, her stomach grumbles, and he offers to buy something. However, Kitagawa insists on cooking a homemade meal. Despite not going as planned, Kitagawa is delighted when Gojo legitimately enjoys her omuris. Back home, Gojo calls Juju and sends her his detailed sketches. Juju is shocked to learn that Kitagawa's outfit was his first cosplay project. Before they hang up, she explains that her younger sister takes her pictures and agrees to meet at a restaurant. However, when Gojo and Kitagawa meet the shy and reserved Shinju Inui, they are blown away by her large size and voluptuous curves. Shinju shows Kitagawa the camera she uses to take Juju's pictures and begins explaining the different filters and settings. The group then visits the studio, located at an abandoned hospital. Inside, Shinju shows the benefits of backlit pictures to Kitagawa. Meanwhile, Gojo finds a scared Juju and they talk about their respective dreams. When she reveals why she chose him to make her cosplay outfit, Gojo recalls another conversation he had with his grandfather. As such, he joyously grabs Juju's hand, which causes her to pass out. After they finish their finals at school, Kitagawa invites Gojo to the beach. When they arrive there, a large sea hawk steals Kitagawa's burger. As they share the remaining burger, Kitagawa decides to enter the ocean. Once he joins her, Gojo reveals that he never got to visit many places during his childhood due to his hobby. Stunned, Kitagawa tells him that she will take him to many places during their summer vacation. Realizing what she just said, Kitagawa excuses herself. While she is alone, she swoons about the situation before taking a picture of Gojo. Gojo and Kitagawa arrive from the store with the materials for the black lobelia outfit. Kitagawa then shows Gojo a swimsuit under her clothes and asks him if he thinks it is proper for the cosplay. An embarrassed Gojo eventually tells her that it is fine. Afterward, he is happy that Kitagawa can finally experience the joy of being helpful. Sometime later, Gojo presents Juju and Kitagawa with their completed outfits before he does Kitagawa's makeup with Juju's guidance. The girls head to the hospital, waiting for Gojo and Shinju. When they finally arrive, Shinju stuns the girls with a male cosplay outfit. In a flashback to the day they first visited the hospital, after Juju and Kitagawa went home, Shinju confirmed Gojo's suspicion that she actually wanted to cosplay as well. When he agreed to help her, she revealed she wanted to cosplay as Soma, a male character from Flower Princess Blaze. Once Gojo took Shinju to his shop, they learned about an item to deal with her chest called Egg Beholder. They later had a conversation while working on Shinju's wig and makeup. Back in the present, everyone takes a group picture. In the hospital, Kitagawa and the Inui sisters have their photo shoot. Juju later thanks Gojo for helping Shinju realize her love of cosplay. Having finished, Juju and Shinju are at home, where Juju admits to Shinju that she is jealous of her for pulling off such a cosplay. She then happily admires some pictures where Gojo appears. Meanwhile, Gojo is talking with Kitagawa on the phone, and she gets jealous when Gojo tells her that Shinju was at his house. Sometime later, Kitagawa expresses her desire to cosplay as Veronica, a dark-skinned character, and they agree to get that effect digitally. However, Kitagawa appears at his house the next day with her skin completely darkened with foundation to match Veronica's skin color. 
After she bathes, she embarrasses him when she exposes herself to show him how to accomplish the outfit. Wanting to buy clothes for him, Kitagawa takes Gojo to the clothing store. Walking back, Gojo admits to Kitagawa that he cannot help her with the Veronica outfit. Shocked and concerned, she asks him why, and he nervously tells her that it is too revealing. Relieved, she teases him and agrees to choose her characters more carefully. Kitagawa invites Gojo to a manga cafe, but Gojo himself feels embarrassed while being alone with her. While killing time, Kitagawa recommends a manga titled Suck IDK to Gojo, and expresses her desire to cosplay as Liz the Succubus. However, she has doubts whether she can pull it off, but decides to do it after Gojo encourages her. Even so, he has a hard time designing the outfit due to the series' simple art style. Later, unbeknownst to Gojo, the studio Kitagawa booked the photoshoot turns out to be a love hotel. While reenacting some of the poses from the manga, Kitagawa ends up sitting on top of Gojo. After taking the picture, Gojo hears the couple in the adjacent room having sex. As such, he tries to get Kitagawa off him. However, he grabs her waist instead, accidentally making her moan and turn off the light when she drops the phone on the switch. Shocked, they stare at each other and nearly kiss. However, before they can go any further, they are called on the phone and told they have to leave. Back home, Gojo thinks about Kitagawa while he is alone in his room. In her apartment, while Gojo helps Kitagawa with her hair ribbons, he discovers that her father cancelled her invitation to go to a summer festival, as she had not done her homework. She also reveals to him that she has been modeling for a magazine to save up for an expensive camera. When they decide to watch a horror movie, Gojo is nervous as he has not watched one before. However, by the end of it, he is analyzing the costumes, while Kitagawa is left scared. They then visit their school to retrieve Kitagawa's math drills, and Gojo saves Kitagawa from drowning when she slips into the pool. Having finished her homework, Kitagawa invites Gojo to the festival, and he is stunned by her look in a yukata, making her happy. They watch the fireworks together, and Gojo carries Kitagawa home, as she is left with bruised feet from walking on sandals. Back home, Kitagawa calls Gojo, telling him that she wants to hear his voice, as she is scared after watching another horror movie. During their talk, Gojo begins to fall asleep, and hearing that he has passed out, Kitagawa tells him that she loves him. 